Bonjour et bienvenue à Hello and welcome to this special edition of the France 24 interview. We're in Bangui, the capital of the Central African Republic, with President Faustine Archange Touadera, who is with us today. Hello. Let's begin with events unfolding in the capital. Recently, after the Sukula operation, we've noticed a resurgence of violence here in Bangui. So how do you feel about this? How do you feel about violence picking up again? And how could you calm things down? I would like to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about this issue of violence returning to the capital. You are very right in pointing this out. On the 8th of April, there was an operation that was launched by the police. The aim of that operation was to arrest criminals in the area who were taking local population hostage. They were operating within the PK5 area. They were requesting taxes from shop owners in the area. And they are really taking hold of the area. Unfortunately, this police operation wasn't successful in reaching its goals. The main goal was to arrest General Force, the warlord. Yes, the General Force and his whole team. And then following that, there was a lot of manipulation that came out. What we saw really was that there was an attempt to make everything religious in nature. They tried to make people believe that the police activity was actually against a particular community, in particular the Muslim community. But this is completely false. And the reason that is so is because the shop owners and the people living in PK5, they were actually complaining quite a bit about the activity of the criminals in the area those criminals who were occupying and still occupy a part of the capital city. Quite obviously, we felt that there has been a lot of manipulation at play, especially following the police operations. We also noticed that in the hinterland, there was one of the armed groups uh, that actually came down to Kakabondoro and wanted to continue on to Bangui. And this was on the pretext that they wanted to defend the local populations. Exactly. So that's something you fear might happen. Indeed, there are those northern warlords, particularly Nuruddin Adams and others who have mentioned marching on Bangui. Is that a credible threat, in your opinion? You know, there really is a lot of manipulation at play. And we must acknowledge the fact that there are people who are working against us. They are enemies of the peace and they are continuing to try to destabilize the country, to destabilize the new democracy that is being put in place. So we should really ask the question why I'm talking about manipulation so much. Following the operation, we saw something which was planned. We saw the arrival of an agent who goes by the code name Alpha. And this Alpha was sending out messages to all the armed groups and even to some political men and women. The aim was to create a platform from which they could destabilize the Central African Republic and the whole nation. And following that, when people heard the call coming from Alpha, that you have someone like Abdullah Hussein who made the decision to take troops and descend on Mangi. And we think that Alpha is actually continuing. You can't tell us who this so-called Alpha is, can you? We have been provided with some intel and some information and we know that the name is Christopher Noto. And there is also Bernard Cousin. This is information that we know and that we have. And they are the people behind this whole effort to manipulate people and information. They are there to, to manipulate politicians, civil society, and even armed groups. 
And luckily, there are some armed groups who are part of the mechanism that was launched by uh, the Nat African Initiative. And these armed groups did not want to participate in this action. They categorically refused any association with Abdullah Hussein. But things are continuing. For instance, we can see what happened in the Fatima church. And it is all part of the same thing. What happened in the church was premeditated. The aim was to try and create tension between religious groups. And it took quite a long time since the transition period to carry out reconciliation activities, to rebuild social cohesion. And they're trying to undermine all of those efforts. They're trying to push people to uprise, to stand up against the states. So they're being manipulated. So you've described the context. However, recently a new player, Russia, has entered center stage. Following a decision by the United Nations Security Council uh, for the Russian military to equip and train the Central African Armed Forces. So, what is the objective of Russian presence in the Central African Republic? You know, ever since July 2016, we have been able to benefit from a mission from the European Union, the EUTM. The aim of that mission is to train the Central African Armed Forces. And as I'm sure you are aware, we have the desire to train a professional army with no political affiliation that is Republican army. And this is all part of the aim to unify the forces, and that's what the EUTM is helping us do. Since 2016, two battalions have been trained. But unfortunately, despite being trained, as you know, we are under embargo, an embargo from the UN Security Council in light of one of their resolutions. So and we have to actually equip and arm our armed forces to ensure that our defense and security forces can actually carry out their tasks. And in light of that, the Russian Federation was very generous in providing us with weapons. And as you said, it happened within the UN Security Council. So what happened, correct me if I'm wrong, was that Russia initially opposed lifting the embargo before it eventually positioned itself to directly provide the country with arms. Would you like me to give names or give some information here? Just give us a bit of background. So the background... We actually called out to all of our allies, in particular France. France actually was very generous in providing us with weapons that came uh, from the Somalian coasts uh, when they were seized from there. And unfortunately, the Somalian Sanctions Committee, in light of resolutions, said that all seized weapons were to be destroyed. And those weapons could then not be given to a third party. And this is what we have mentioned in our discussions with the Russian Federation, and the Russian Federation chose to give the weapons, despite it being against the UN resolution. So they gave us weapons so that we could actually arm our security and defense forces. As regards this Russian presence in the country, some in Bangui, the capital, have started asking questions about Russia's long-term ambitions. You recently met Vladimir Putin in St. Petersburg. So how do you see this new Russian partnership evolving going forward? So what's going to happen in the future? Well, we were very honored to be actually invited to the Economic, Economic Forum in St. Petersburg. 
So I would like to just make a special mention of that and thank Russia for extending that invitation to the Central African Republic. It was an opportunity for us to promote business opportunities in the Central African Republic. The Central African Republic is a country which is trying to bring itself out of crisis. And we're calling on investors and we're showing them that there are many business opportunities in our country. So I met with the, the Russian president, President Putin, to talk about how we could increase Russian and Central African Republic cooperation. Well, on the military dimension precisely, is it true that Russia is actually committed on the long term with the Central African Republic or is this just this one-off delivery? As you know, relations between the Central African Republic and Russia aren't recent. They go back many years, back to the 60s. In fact, in Bangui, you have the Russian embassy. It is one of the largest. In fact, it goes back to the 1960s. And just on that, it's a perfect opportunity to remind everyone of this long-standing cooperation, a long period of cooperation between our two countries, but unfortunately it was cut short. And today we now have the opportunity to extend and develop and continue that cooperation. Now, I've also met France's Foreign Affairs Minister, Jean-Yves Le Drian, and you personally criticised the um, Sangaris force for pulling out too early. Yes, we did say in the day that it was premature. So what's the situation today? Uh, do you feel that France is still committed to support the Central African Republic if it hits difficulties? France and the Central African Republic have been long-standing allies and we have always had quite sound relations. Today, granted, France did withdraw troops, which we did describe as being premature at the time because we had just come into power. The Sangaris forces were considerably large, and there was, on top of that, Miniska, and thanks to them, they were able to stop violence for, and to limit violence at the peak of the crisis. And then there are armed groups as well, but the Sangaris groups left. So we felt quite dismayed at the fact that they did leave so soon. We felt it was too early. And there were other forces as well that left the country at the time. But today, we're now calling on all of our allies, all of our friends around the world, because we need their help. We're currently going through a rebuilding phase, and we need support from all of our allies, from all of those who are willing to help us. And we are very much open to their help. How about questions being asked by the parliament, by the inter-religious platform or civil society about Russia's presence? What can you tell them? What's your answer to them? What's the question? What concerns? Well, there are concerns. Clearly, you're being asked to clarify Russia's role and objectives. What's the point of it? And where are we going with um, Russia in particular? First, we should recognize the efforts made by the Russian Federation to help us. They provided us, they provided our security and defense forces with weapons. And as you know, in light of the UN Security Council resolution and certainly the sanctions committee's decisions, there are a lot of reserves that have been put in place. Reserves in terms of our ability to train our Central African Armed Forces and in terms of providing us with weapons. So we asked the Russian Federation for help. They helped us. They provided us with trainers as part of that. All right. Thank you, Mr. President, for being with us. Thank you for watching this special edition of France 24 interview. Stay tuned.